Hey y'all, it's T. I'm going on my first solo trip out of the country ever. I'm doing island by myself and then I'm gonna be meeting up with two friends in Paris. This is probably one of the most spontaneous things I've ever done in my life. And I'm taking y'all along there with me. One thing I will say is I thought it was gonna be cold and I'm sweating. I wish I didn't bring this jacket with me, but like you, it was raining when I got here. So it's probably a good thing that I have it. I just wish I didn't. But Dublin Castle was really pretty. I'm looking over at this courtyard right now where people are just having lunch and chilling and there's tours underneath me. I think next I'm gonna go do the cathedral and then I'm gonna do Trinity College and then I'm gonna head to my tour at the Guinness Storehouse, which I think that'll be really cool because something that's really cool about it is there's a 360 view of the city that I saw. So but I'm a little nervous about if I'm gonna like Guinness. I know I haven't even been here for three hours, but I think St. Patrick's Cathedral is immediately one of my favorites. <laughs> like, look at that, y'all. It just looks majestic. I had a little ice cream before this from Murphy's. It was so good. I need to get it again after this, depending on how I like Guinness. Also, it has literally been smelling like Guinness for the past half mile that I've walked. You know, I couldn't go to Ireland, especially Dublin, Ireland, without going to the Guinness storehouse. So that's exactly what we're doing today, y'all. I literally got off my flight at 10 a.m. and my tour started at 4, so I booked it there. And I have to say, I'm not even really into stuff like this, but I'm thoroughly impressed and surprised at how much I enjoyed this experience. There is so much of a process and so so much history that goes into a Guinness. The experience is all encompassing. It tells you about the process from start to finish and the history too, which I thought was so cool because it's such a big part of Irish culture. This short vlog does not do the experience justice. I learned how Guinnesses are made from start to finish as well as how it all started. Like dude really bought this factory with a 9,000 year lease. Can you believe that? He was like, this is going to be successful. Anyway, once learning about the history, they took us into this like Willy Wonka type room where we could smell all all the notes that go into a Guinness, which I thought was crazy. It's a white room because apparently your senses are heightened when that happens and they give you a little sample so you could really get the full experience of tasting a Guinness. Telling us when to exhale and inhale and when to swallow it. And I gotta say, I actually liked it. Um, and then we went to the next part of the tour where it was more about the marketing of the Guinness and it showed us the first ever ad. It showed the different marketing campaigns that the Guinness had over the years, talking about the thought process that went behind it all, as well as the evolution of the logo with the heart. And at the end of the tour, it took you to the sky deck where you could enjoy a pint with the 360 view of the city of Dublin. I thought that was super cool and I loved seeing the Guinness settle before they added the foam on top. It was like a waterfall because there is an art to the pouring of the Guinness like you have to pour it and then let it sit and then add the foam but on top of that I got to see a rainbow with the view so I thought that was a good omen to the trip and I really enjoyed this experience I had at the storehouse so the Guinness tour was really cool really amazing I wish that I could have done it with my dad because he would have loved it I met some nice people in the lounge they were about like my parents age and one was a dad with his daughter there and it was really like wholesome and there was even a rainbow as you saw in the video. I'm glad I like ticked off a lot of things in Dublin and now I'm excited to do the Cliffs and More tomorrow. And I hope I can get into the boxy house tonight because your girl is so tired. I was literally, literally falling asleep standing up in the Guinness, <laughs> the Guinness tour. It was dimly lit. You can't blame me. I hope these pimples from the flight calm down. My skin always freaks out when I am on an airplane. <laughs> We just arrived at the Cliffs of War and I'm on my way to the now. It's really cool, their buildings go into the, the hill. And our tour guide said, coming up on this one, he said this is where Frodo lives and this is the visitor center. And up here, we'll go see them. At first I wasn't sure about this one when I signed up for it, but now that I'm here, I'm so happy that I signed up for it. 
is the slightest bit of fog. Something that our tour guide was saying is that surfing is really popular in West Ireland, which is surprising because I wouldn't have expected that, but after seeing the waves against the cliffs, I think it makes a lot of sense. basically reiterating everything the tour guide has told us but he was saying how Ireland doesn't have four seasons you essentially have four seasons in a day it can be very rainy and they call it liquid sunshine so like randomly there will be bursts of rain gust of wind out of nowhere you have to dress to be prepared in all situations and that's exactly what's happening I'll randomly put my hood on for a little bit take it off put on my sunglasses when it's sunny take them off take off my jackets put them back on get the drill. We're looking at Mordor right now. It seems like there's a tour group in the distance, but this is Mordor inspiration where he started with Mordor. Tour guide was telling us how a lot of movies are filmed here, especially on this side of the island. The west side is up for the Princess Bride. Other things up in Belfast is obviously Game of Thrones. And then there's also the TV show Vikings. Moving over to this side of the island where the water is. I had to see the dog. <laughs> so what Galway is known for is their oysters and their seaweed, as well as their knit sweaters. And the original place of the clatter ring is here We're at Thomas Dillon's. I tried to get it, but they're closed for lunch right now. But there's a really nice seafood place, the King's Head, that has good seafood chowder and oysters. And I'm excited to try it. And where you get the sweaters is called Aran. This is where you get the sweaters. They are really just as nice quality as I've heard. And this is home of the Clatter Ring, the original makers. They've gone to lunch right now, but I hope to come back right before. So look how pretty the jewelry is. I just got back to the Airbnb after the longest, most tiring, but most amazing day seeing the cliffs, the Buren, and Galway. I love the tour group so much. I actually booked another tour for tomorrow to go up to Belfast through the same tour group because I had such a good experience today. So I'm excited to do that. Um, I did a plan to see Belfast like I just said, but I was just talking to a German girl that I met on the bus that I sat next to and she was like, I wish I was able to go to Belfast. And I was like, well, if the German girl is saying she wants to go to Belfast, then I gotta go to Belfast. And um, another guy in front of us from Chicago went up there and he was a huge Game of Thrones fan. I haven't watched Game of Thrones, but <laughs> I'm excited to see it. And then I'm gonna squeeze in a little bit more Dublin before I go to court, which will be super fun. I'm hoping to get some editing done tonight and then I can hopefully go to sleep before I wake up early again tomorrow for my next adventure. <laughs> I'm so tired, I need a window seat tomorrow so I can fall asleep because I kept going like this. Good morning. It is currently about 5.30 and I'm almost done getting ready for the day. I'm doing a quick beat on my face and I'm gonna head to catch the bus to make it to the same meeting point that I did yesterday. I'm using my fingers for a very natural beat. Um, the pimple has not, has improved a little. And the fact that there's gonna be a head soon. This one doesn't hurt anymore. 
I don't want anymore. I'm going to Belfast and I don't remember if I mentioned that. This means I need to change my currency and I'll be doing that at the gas station we stop at. I'm just trying to get my butt out the door. The eye makeup that I've been wearing was literally just released last week by Colourpop. I wasn't excited for the launch when it first came out, but I'm loving it. I start with these two shadow sticks. These are like the perfect natural colors. And then I finish up with this palette. And then I'll use this color Brouhaha Creme Gel Liner as my liner for a natural beat. Quick and easy makeup. I did it in under 15 minutes. And this is the final look. I gotta go. I made it back at the meeting point of the gallery. It's honestly, I'm here a little too early. It's like 6.10 and the buses don't leave until 6.45, just like yesterday. I should have stopped and gotten some food, but I was thinking that I was late because I actually woke up at a normal time and not overly early because of my anxiety. I'm hoping I can get a window seat today because yesterday was not the business, falling asleep and having my head go everywhere. Oh, oh, they got screwed. Oh, you can't get on your side. We're on your side. Sorry, thanks. All right. Well, there's there's a funny addition to your tour. This is Pike Castle, as seen in Game of Thrones. And all around it, add some CGI snow and you have Winterfell. I've never seen Game of Thrones. Behind me, I'm at Giant's Causeway, which is the result of a volcanic eruption. And they're just preserving it now, but it's cool to see the result of this eruption. There's 40,000 basalt columns. All the volcanic rock along the edge. These rock formations are just so crazy to see. When I zoom in, like look how perfectly they are for like steps.
Just to expand on the legend a bit more, the wife typically is seen or heard during Halloween season. And Halloween season is actually an Irish holiday. And instead of pumpkins, they would carve turnips and they would wear masks and not say anything because if they were to say something, the fairies would know that they were humans and take them down to the underworld because Halloween was the time when the overworld and the underworld were the most able to be crossed over. So it's not quite her season yet, but we're pretty much right on top of it. Now fairies, I haven't actually shared this with the vlog yet, but there's these trees that they call fairy trees and you can find them all over Ireland. I think they're technically called hawthorn trees, but it's said that if you chop down one of those trees, that bad luck is upon you because the fairies will come out and wreak havoc. So a lot of Irish will choose not to chop down these trees and there's been plenty of times where government or people wanting to build a road will come in and tell them you need to chop that tree down and people will just go no. So there's roads built around fairy trees in Ireland because if they had chopped them down, it would have brought bad luck. So sometimes you might find a tree making a road go a different way or you'll look out into a field and you'll just see a tree solely standing there by itself, no other trees around it. So an example of this bad luck the fairy chief would bring, I'm a fan of Back to the Future, so we'll talk about how John DeLorean bulldozed a fairy tree down in Belfast to build his car plan in order to build the DeLorean. He bulldozed it himself because no one else would do it. And once he did that, he eventually had to file for bankruptcy in 1982. This statue of Queen Victoria was finished building right after she died, pretty much, so she never got to see it. She was still such a sleigh, though. This is our last stop on the tour today, just exploring Belfast on our own. So I'm just going to different landmarks and seeing what they are. A lot of art to be seen in Belfast. It's like everywhere you go, there's a new mural to look at. It literally always has something. I just did two quick tours before checkout in Dublin this morning. I went to St. Patrick's Cathedral, and before that, I went to the Book of Kells and the Long Room in the old library. And they're about to close it for restoration for about three to five years. So there's only books on the shelves in the first few parts. And at first, I wasn't sure how I felt about it because I was like, oh, I wish I could see the books. Then I reframed it. No one's seen the bones of the long room like this before. So I decided to get a ticket and it didn't disappoint at all. Today is going to be quite the busy day. So we get two tours in Dublin before I get on the train to go to Cork and do the Titanic tour. My Airbnb was like in the perfect place in Dublin. It was 10 minutes, 15 minutes walking from everything. I grabbed a cup of coffee from a place that they recommended. Thanks, Maria. And I made my way over to the Book of Kells and the long room. I forgot to mention that there used to be a tax on windows to have windows on your building so in order to get around that the irish decided to build windows that weren't actually windows more clips of the no window windows in action anyway i got to trinity college about 8 8 30 and the campus is super pretty to look at and it was such a good time to go to the book of kells because it's not super crowded what exactly are the book of kells it's a manuscript of the celtic gospel containing the new testament it's basically all these guys got together and were like let's make the bible pretty and that's exactly what they did and it showed us the process of how they did it and then we actually got to see the book of kells it's actually one of the few precious survivals of book production from the 8th and 9th centuries so it was really cool to see this process and then afterward my tour took me to the long and room and the long room is the main chamber in the old library and it's over 200 feet long and it's filled with like 200,000 of the oldest books it's one of the most impressive libraries in the world but when i saw it it was currently going under renovation so it was really cool to see like like the bones of the library because all the books had been removed past like the first few columns. Really cool to see and also really cool to see like this artwork on the pages of the book. I just thought it was so cool to see all this literature surviving all these years and then once I was done I made my way over to St. Patrick's Cathedral. Just finished up the book of Kells in the old library at Trinity College and I'm booking it across town to make it to St. Patrick's Cathedral. The gift shop though I was flattered he thought I was a Trinity College student so 
Just call me Irish. After a brisk 10 minute walk from Trinity College, I finally found myself back at St. Patrick's Cathedral. I got there when it just had opened, so it's like the timing worked out perfectly. I didn't get to go when I first saw it because it's closed on Sundays, so I'm happy I made it there before I left Dublin. And churches really popped off with their architecture and art, y'all. Like, they really did that. <laughs> like, what? There was also a section where they showed different robes that the priest would wear for different occasions, which I thought was really cool. I love a good closet. I also love a good stained glass window. It was like every single one in there had a different story to tell. The level of detail and history in this place is no joke and the audio guided tour is really something and I highly suggest you do it if you find yourself at the St. Patrick's Cathedral. After that, I went back to my Airbnb and got my suitcase and braved the rain to make it to my train to Cork and Cove to continue the adventure. Okay, so where was I? I was getting on the train from Dublin to go to court. It was pouring rain. It was not a good time. I was soaked and I became freezing on the train because it got cold where I was sitting. But eventually after two and a half hours, I got to court. Luckily my Airbnb was a short walk away from the train station. I had to get back to the train to go to Cove to make sure I made my Titanic reservation. I dropped off my luggage at the Airbnb and now I'm going back to the train station making a Titanic reservation. One of the train attendants had asked me where all my bags went and I told them I was like, they're at my stay. I'm going to Cove now. So I I think neither of us can believe it that I actually made my train to go. Like I told y'all, the weather was crazy. You can literally see how choppy the waves are on my train ride from Cork to Cove. I literally <laughs> felt like it was kind of poetic that I was going to go to the Titanic Museum and the waters were this choppy heading there. This is what they looked like after I had arrived and the Titanic Museum that I was going to was just a short walk from the station, thankfully, and I made my reservation. I actually made the earlier reservation they let me join the earlier group so that was kind of sick i definitely wish i went to the belfast titanic museum instead i don't think this is a must do in cove i honestly wish i went on nicer weather so i could have enjoyed this small seaside town a bit more because it was empty when i went after my tour i decided to walk around a bit and i went to the cathedral cove is empty bro like no one is here because how crazy this freaking is. I feel insane. <laughs> I have to check out the cathedral. This wind was pushing me, y'all. Like, I was trying to stand still and look at the cathedral, but then every now and then a gust of wind would push me away from it. It was pretty insane, but it honestly was pretty cool as well because no one else was around, so I got to explore the cathedral on my own. And then on my way out, I ran into an older couple that was on my Titanic tour, and they were like, crazy weather, huh? And I was like, yeah it is i hope you're staying safe and they said you too and it was just a really wholesome interaction this cathedral feels the most like a castle because it literally feels like i'm down in the boat park right now because <laughs> it's so high up on a hill um it was beautiful inside as y'all saw um damn i just can't get over this wind pushing me around crazy I think I'm gonna head back to Cork for dinner because there's a place I really want to try and I don't know if I get to it tomorrow. And Cove is just, it's just deserted. <laughs> it's empty. After that, I was pretty much done exploring the town and I decided to catch the train back to Cork so I could go have dinner at this one Japanese place called Miyazaki. I already posted my video about that, so you should go check that out if you're interested. I'm back again going to another restaurant recommended by somebody Feed Phil. The big thing here is seaweed tempura. This is very much a hole in the wall place in Cork, Ireland. So if you do go, I recommend going at a non-busy time or getting takeout. I was lucky enough to get a seat when I went, but I was not so lucky enough to find out their seaweed tempura doesn't exist anymore she said they hadn't sold it there in years so i looked a little silly but we move i got the mushroom tempura instead and it was very very delicious i think if you're someone that's not even a mushroom lover i think you would potentially like this but i love mushrooms and i love this for the entree i got the tori tatsuda dom which is a japanese style crispy fried chicken in a namban sauce i hope i pronounced that correctly but it was really good it was like the juiciest chicken and 
I have ever had. This is one of those dishes where you wish your stomach is bigger than it actually is because for 12.50 euro, this is a lot of food. The only thing I wish, I wish the rice was cooked a little bit better, but overall a good experience and I would recommend it. Villarney Castle and Gardens is way bigger than I thought it would be, y'all. This is crazy. This is legit like where princesses and princes would live. Like, look at this. Look. see a bit of a spiral and floral decoration that used to be there. Same with seeing the tile work used to be. I greatly underestimated the size of Blarney Castle and Gardens. You could spend four hours here easily. And if you really want to like look at everything, maybe even spend three fourths full day here, this place is ginormous. There's so much to see. My favorite so far, like obviously I love the castle, but I also really like the fern garden where it had all these palm-like ferns and the waterfall. Oh, I'm gonna get me started. I wanna make sure I see the house even from the outside, but man, this is for real like fairy tale land. Like this is Narnia, this is Terabithia, this is where prince, princesses, kings, and queens, this is where they live. And I've just stumbled across a kiln. Like you just walk anywhere and you're gonna find something. There's something to look at everywhere you go. But I highly recommend wearing walking shoes. It's a bit of a rainy season and luckily these are getting just now broken in, but I'm wearing my docks. I would wear like walking shoes, rain boots, depending on the season you come to Ireland in. Also, before I forget, I wanted to tell you all the legend of the stone when I was reading about it. And one of the legends concerns the queen of the fairies, who was the most beautiful thing to come from the leading druid. She fell in love with like a gallant young soldier he broke her heart as a man does later he was killed in battle and she was so torn up about it that like she cried on the stone that had his blood on it which therefore made the stone magical and that's the stone that's in the castle and that's why it gives people good luck because her tears put the magic into the stone and once you kissed it your difficulties were resolved we'll see about that i don't know if difficulties are getting resolved because everyone's kissing it and we still got covid going around so <laughs> maybe we'll all have the same strain big mushroom this isn't concerning at all. <laughs> Be alone in a forest and see an empty stroller. Something also really, really cool here was that there was a carnivorous garden and a poisonous garden just outside the castle. And it was really cool to see what they used it for and seeing them all in the same place. And the sign literally said, careful of these plants might bite. They were on top of it. I'm so curious about what my steps are gonna look like at the end of the day. I figured I'd talk about this while I'm mostly alone and I can speak loudly without feeling embarrassed talking to a camera. If you are a solo female traveler or you're only going to be in Ireland for a short amount of time, I highly recommend staying in Dublin the entire time and then going on day tours because I went on two day tours as y'all know and 
I was able to see the Cliffs of Moor, Galway, Dunlans Council, which is Pike Castle in Game of Thrones, Giant's Causeway, you know, all those big things. And there were some parts where I wish that like, you know, I wish I did the Titanic Museum in Belfast, a part of my tour. I just didn't buy the ticket in time. You need to buy it in advance. The other thing is that they do all the heavy lifting for you and I felt safe the entire time on and off the bus. And I met other solo female travelers. I met other people who were by themselves and you get to see a lot in a short amount of time. And they're really good about that. Whereas when I went to Cork, I didn't rent a car and I just felt like I wanted to take the train. I didn't want to have to worry about a rental car. I didn't want to have to drive. It stressed me out to have the narrow streets and on the opposite side of the road. And I just feel like the train and changing Airbnbs and figuring out check-in time kind of cut into my time. Whereas I would have done the day trip to like Blarney Castle, Rock of Cashel and Kilkenny on the next tour through Finn McCool Tours because I was able to see so much in one day just going out of Dublin. Whereas the nice thing about me doing Blarney Castle on my own is that I get to spend as much time here as I want because typically like the main attractions of each day tours that they do, you spend about two hours at. Whereas here at Blarney Castle, I can spend as long as I want here. So that's like pros and cons between the two of them. If you're gonna be staying in Dublin, highly recommend staying in South Dublin, which is Dublin too, if you're looking at addresses. That's like the safer part of the city compared to Dublin one for others people like myself it's just dependent on how you want to spend your time and how much time you have in Ireland itself if you spend the majority of your time in Ireland and not really up in Northern Ireland you can still see Belfast in a quick day trip and Giants Causeway which is really nice because I didn't really have to worry about the currency exchange because I paid for my ticket and I got access to everything and I just used card at the gas station to buy snacks so overall if you're in Ireland for a short time I would just stay in Dublin and do Finn McCool tours to see the majority of Ireland that you can but if you want to spend a little more time at like Blarney Castle or if you don't mind working in the travel logistics, then you can move around and come to Cork like I did and spend more time at Blarney Castle. But I think you could also just do a day trip on your own from Dublin to see Blarney Castle. And the tour guides I had, they were all just the best and so educational about like Ireland itself. Like I wish I did the Blarney Castle tour and the Rock of Cashel and Kilkenny tour, day tour today instead of coming to Cork because they're just so far apart and you don't have to worry about the driving and you just head back to home base at the end. However, I'm super happy to be having all this extra time at Blarney Castle and Gardens because it's huge, y'all. And as I found it, I somehow walked right into Blarney House without even purposely doing so. It's like the universe said, you ask and you shall receive. If I've had to say a favorite adventure I've had so far, I definitely would have to say Giant's Causeway was the most unexpected win of the trip because just the hexagonal basalt columns were so cool to see from the ancient volcanic eruption. Definitely say wear shoes that you can walk on those in as well. If you're thinking about like what to wear to Ireland, I'd say like mostly pants, walking shoes, rain shoes, Shoes, long sleeve, short sleeve, layers. Like think layers that you can peel off during the day, but you can wear. Like sometimes I'm a bit warm in this sweater, but sometimes I'm a bit chilly. Like now when the thing starts coming about, but I have a puffer jacket to put on when I need it for rain and when I need it for warmth. Like this is not your typical European fashion. And I recommend joining this Facebook group that I did, Ireland Tips and Tricks. I was able to find restaurants i was able to find like the highlights of each city that i was going to through this group and ask questions another piece of advice if you're wanting to do blarney castles and if you want to kiss the stone i'd get here as early as possible because i just got back to the castle two hours later and the line's looking long these right here are the wishing steps if you think about only what your wish is and walk back down and up, then it'll come true within the next year. Which lead into the witch's kitchen, the witch's cave, which won Irish Tree of the Year in 2019, which is the most Ireland thing I've ever heard. And then there's also the Druid Cave too. So there's all these cool caves you can see. And that was the second waterfall I've seen here. The first one I saw was in the Fern Garden and then the one over by the Wishing Steps. Super cool. And then now that we're here, there's like another, I'm not gonna walk in it, but there's like bamboo. I just found the best site in the whole garden. At least it's my favorite, but look at this y'all. It's literally the river 
and the castle in one beautiful shot. I love it so much. I'm back at the Airbnb and before I take my shower, I just wanted to answer some questions that I saw that I asked y'all on my Instagram. I'm like answering them. My lip color just is completely gone, but it's fine. And I already got it three times is like, do I feel safe traveling alone? Like, how do I like it? And I have to say that I specifically, like this is my first solo trip ever. And I specifically chose Ireland because it, speaks the same language as I do. Like the native language is English, I speak English. And I thought, okay, why not do my first solo trip to a country that speaks the same language that I do so that if I'm really in trouble, then I won't have trouble communicating. Like I won't have a language barrier happening. And that also being said, Ireland in comparison to Barcelona or Paris, like I feel fine taking a purse out with me. I don't feel like I'm gonna get that taken from me. People are very kind here. If you're looking to do a solo trip yourself like keep these factors in mind like what's a good area to start with like what's a good beginner level because i have felt safe this entire time and dublin was easy to navigate i was lucky enough to have my first airbnb in the middle of everything people were helpful in a lot of ways so i think ireland's a great place to start if you ever want to get into solo traveling and you're an american like me also something to keep in mind while ireland is really big on guinness and drinking I haven't really been doing that. I've been going to bed early and getting up early because I'm more sightseeing oriented. Like I did the Guinness tour and I went to a pub, but like I'm not really spending all that much time going out. I think my perspective would be a lot different about my safety if I were going out every night, but I'm not. I also, when I was booking my Airbnbs, because I'm not staying in hostels, I'm pretty much staying by myself in three different Airbnbs. I, rude. <laughs> When I was booking my Airbnbs, I was making sure like they all had over 4.5 stars. Like I chose all women hosts, like making sure I had my private room and bath each time, which was less expensive than I thought it would be. But it's definitely like factors that you should be thinking about as a solo female traveler. That's just what I've learned at least. And I've really enjoyed the tour groups that I've gone on, like the day tours. Such a game changer to be alone with a tour group of a bunch of people who are also touring Ireland and you have very well-versed tour guides who know what they're talking about so I cannot emphasize how much that has impacted my experience here and like I was able to take backpacks on the bus and I didn't feel like, oh my gosh wait why I shouldn't have this so all in all I felt pretty safe there are times like at night where I'm like oh my god what am I doing this is scary and I'm like walking faster but like I just remind myself it's to remain calm. Like last night I got stuck on the bus and I missed my stop and I was like, I can't get off because this isn't Dublin, I'm in Cork and this is like, I don't want to be in the middle of nowhere because if I get off, got off the bus, I would have been in the middle of nowhere, dude. So I had a moment on the bus, I talked to the driver, I was like, I'm just gonna stay on here and we circled back around the city. It didn't take too, too long. Maybe it added like 20, 30 minutes to my trip, but I'd rather have 20, 30 minutes added to my trip than getting off the bus, waiting 20, 30 minutes for the next one in the dark. We move, we survive, but I think I've captured everything. Do your research. Think of where you're going and think of the places you're going to be staying and all that jazz. I hope this answers the question. It's been very educational, rewarding. I have felt safe because of the things that I did to make sure of that I'd feel safe. And I'm excited to move on to France next week and meeting with my friends. <laughs> <laughs>